start streaming. And hopefully, there it goes. Okay, I think we're live, but I'm not seeing. There we are. We're in Roblox. And yes, hello. Okay, okay. I think. Good. Okay, so everything seems to be working. So today what we're going to do is work on documenting how we go from Roblox Studio into Altspace via Unity. And there's some things that I want to bring in that I can build with uh, in Unity and in Altspace. One is this, um, <clears throat> this cinder block. So I'm clicking on that cinder block there, and I'm going to export it by right-clicking here in the Explorer and then going to export selection down here and then export it as an OBJ. And the reason I'm doing that is because Roblox has a lot of different assets that the user base and the professionals at Roblox have created and it makes it a lot easier to build worlds even than working in Unity where there are some great assets. Many of them cost, some of them are free, you have to import the package. Um, and I like to start by building a world in Roblox, having the world to play in Roblox and then bring it out to Unity and then bring it into Alt Space so I can then meet people in there uh, to do other activities. I'm a teacher and so there's the play aspect of Roblox and then there's the pedagogy that you can do because in Alt Space you can put in videos and you can put in slideshows and you can talk to one another, which you can't do in Roblox. So they serve two different purposes. Um, let's go into a folder called Blender Exports for Alt Space. Might as well be called Roblox Exports, but I started with Blender. So I'm going to put in um, the cinder block. Oh, it looks like I already did a cinder block. So I don't need to do that. Let's do a different one. Sorry. Let's, uh, let's bring in this raised bed. Let's see if we grab this whole raised bed and let's see if the other stuff can be brought into it so it all goes out as one model. So there's weeds and there's raised bed. And I think what I'll have to do then is take these and there's other raised oh that's all the raised beds but they don't have everything in them so i'm going to take this raised bed and i'm going to change its name to raised bed with tomatoes so i know which one that is now i'm going to take the tomatoes and take the tomato crop and i'm going to bring it up to that raised bed are actually down because those are models and then I need to get to actual objects. There it is. And raised bed with tomatoes and drop that inside. And then I'm going to take this one, this tomato vine, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take it, oh, can I find it? Tomato vine, there it is. Ooh, I put it in the tree by mistake. Oh, that was a mistake. Okay. Uh, let me bring it down. Okay, I've got tomato vine. So I'm going to go down, take it out of tree, and again go to raised bed. All this stuff takes some time to do. I hesitate to just cut and paste because I've made mistakes doing that. You can do a cut and paste. Um, oh, I just totally messed this one up. Tomato vine is now in grass. Let me see if I cut it. Let's try that. Cut it, and now go to the raised bed that I want to put it in, and let's hope that if I paste it, paste into, oh, it worked, tomato vine got in there. Okay, so I guess you can do that. So take the object, cut it, go and find the area that you want to paste it into, and paste into, there we go. And now I should be able to export this whole raised bed, export selection as an OBJ, and I call it raised bed with tomatoes and export that out. So let's just try that. <clears throat> but there's the idea is that you have a world that you've created in Roblox. And one more thing I want to show before I get out of here is how easy it is to bring stuff into Roblox. So we have um, we have over here a, a shed. There's a little shed that we have down here that I want to put in. So I would go to the model home. I'll go home and go to toolbox and 
me move my toolbox over so I can see it better and drag it down. And let me put in shed. And Did you export that? What, what is it? Why you it's exported it to a folder. It's sitting in a folder. You get at it later. I've already exported this selection. I'm going to do it again with the shed. So there's a shed pretty much like the shed that we have. And I'm going to take that and drop it in. Sorry, so it went to the wrong place. It says your model thingy. Let me call it shed. It's got to always name stuff. And I guess I can cut that and then go to the area that I want to place it into, which is up here. And I'm going to paste it into IBC Vi Oh, it didn't do a darn thing. So really, I didn't want to do that. Let me cut it again. Let me go back up to the top to the workspace and paste it into the workspace. So it's its own independent thing. I have to move it by hand. So that's not a big deal. I'll just keep scrolling over and move the shed where I want it. And good. So now I have a shed. And make sure that you're, you've set it on the ground. I like Roblox that it snaps pretty well. But just in case, you can sort of do this until the little blue bar is just touching the ground. Okay. So that's good. Now, see how easy it was to put the shed in the right location in our game, because that's where it is in real life, and then take it from here and go export selection and say shed as an OBJ, and it exports that. Now we go into Unity. So let me switch over to Unity. And so I'm in Unity version 2019.4.2F1. There are so many versions of Unity. This is a legacy version. There are 2020, because it's the year 2020 versions. And there's different ones, 2020.1, This is 2019.4.2 F1. It seems to be right now one of the only ones that works with Alt Spaces Uploader. So <clears throat> if you try to use any other version of Unity, you might get confused and things might don't work. So I would say use this version of Unity and uh, for now, everything should work out fine. So that shed, for example, that we just saw, it goes near the RV, near the biodigesters over here. And to get it in, it should be in that folder that I had called Blender Exports. And it should be under shed. There it is, shed OBJ. And there's a shed MTL for the material. So I'm going to select both of those and I'm going to drag them in. You can also do import asset, but sometimes it doesn't work. So I highly recommend you do it this way. Because if you right click and go import new asset and go to your folder, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So I drag it in. Seems to be whatever algorithm they have works better with that. So now shed is here. And I can take that shed and drop it into the world. And then it doesn't go where you want to, as usual. So I hit the F key to zoom in on it. Yeah, it went way over in nowhere land. So there's a couple ways to fix that. But the best way I've found for doing this without sort of dragging all day is to find the rough location of where you want to put it by referencing another object in that location. And in this case, I'm going to use this IBC tank. And note that it's negative 21 in X and negative 34 in Z, roughly. Don't worry about the Y right now. That's the up and down in this program. So let me go back to my shed here and go whatever is negative 23, 21. negative 21, and negative 34, and then make the Y roughly 0 0.5 for now. And let there, let's see if it appeared. And then oh. inevitably it's not going to do what you want it to. No, it didn't. So... I guess we got to do it by hand to get it near there. It's coming too way too big. Now will it do it? Negative. Maybe not. You start tweaking later on, but... Let's shrink this down. Let's go to the shrinking thing. And you're going to have... Roblox is significantly bigger than Unity. So you're going to have to scale things down and it's a pain 
and somebody else who's more mathematically inclined could figure out exactly what the scaling factor is. I'm sure I could figure out if I put the time to it, but we get lazy. So I'm going to bring this down to the ground and bring it over. And now we're at negative 30. Wish I could get rid of this darn clipping. It's also rotated in the wrong direction. So here I can definitely use this rotation thing and say 180, except it made it disappear. So forget that. That didn't work either. Oh, lordy. It must be a local rotation versus a global rotation that's messing it up. So do it by hand again. He said, so negative 176, so I should now change this to negative 180. There we go. Now it's working right. So sometimes you can work with the inspector. All right. And so we have the same shed now in here. Put it back up against the fence line and leave room for the B shed. That's there. All right, now we also had talked about the cinder block. I want to bring in a cinder block and have one handy. So once again, I'm going to go to here and find my cinder block, lest I would like to build in Unity. Um, cinder, cinder, cinder. Barbecue, carport, chicken coop, cinder block. So there's the cinder block. Drag that in. And now find the cinder block here and drag that cinder block in. Who knows where it went, so you have to hit F to find it. It went way over in another part of the world. I still haven't figured out how Unity decides where to put stuff. I'm getting annoyed with it. Somebody else could leave in the comments like a much easier way and go, hey, you idiot. But you know what? I'll put the cinder block. I will put the cinder block up here on the other side of the greenhouse where we have the raised bed and I'm going to shrink it down again eyeballing which is kind of annoying until I figure out what factor to use for the scale. Maybe 0.2 actually works. Let's see. Control Z that. Maybe 0.15. We'd have to find a proper cinder block to show. Kind of looks okay. Oh, we can always scale it later. So I have a single cinder block. And the reason I'm doing that is if I want to build this keyhole garden that we have, I can try to build, take the one that I've built almost in row blocks. I also wanted to show that you can also use Control D here and just duplicate and start building stuff if you don't want it to come in. So if you want to build stuff anew, you have that option for the keyhole. Yeah, the other thing I was going to bring in, the chicken coop. Chicken coop I had exported yesterday. It goes here on the Google map. And so that chicken coop, have I brought it in yet? Chicken coop, chicken, 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 chicken. No, I have not yet. So chicken coop, go back to the folder, find the chicken coop. There it is, the MTL, which is the material file. There is the object. Drag the chicken coop in. And let's get that chicken coop. Chicken coop. This is from Roblox. Which, um, which one do you choose from that? Uh, the OBJ. I'm not even sure if bringing in the MTL is making is working now, to tell you the truth. So there's the chicken coop, and I'm going to bring that over. And now I have a sort of eyeball idea that the stuff in Roblox seems to be scaled so lar uh, large, larger, and if I use 0.15, it might get close. And this is a good litmus test for it. Let's see if the 0.15 scaling works once I rotate this around. So the first thing I've noticed is it comes in negative 180 out of uh, rotation. So I'm going to go negative 180. And it disappeared. There it is. But it, oh, 
Isn't that weird? Okay. Um, where is it? Indeed. It went way over in the other side of the world again. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's the right rotation. It has to do with global rotation versus local rotation. These objects don't come in faithfully. That's the problem. But it is now rotated properly if I can find the darn... It's way underneath the world now. Whoa, bring it up. Bring it up. Bring it up. Bring it down. Bring it up. Bring it down. Okay. And now it seems like it's facing the right way. Yep, it's facing the right way. There's the chicken coop, but I'll get too big, so let me scale it at 0 0.15 on the X, Y, and Z. 0 0.15. And what happened to it? Did it scale properly? Did it move? Yeah, it moved way over there. It keeps, it keeps moving. It's a big pain, isn't it? So let's see if the scaling factor works. Ah, but the scaling factor seems to be okay. <clears throat> a little bit small this time, actually. So forget the 0.15 idea. Different objects are obviously coming in at different sizes. So it's not that comforting. All right, so let's scale it uh, using the scale tool, grabbing the center piece, because if you grab any one of these, you'll just make it longer or shorter, or you'll make it squatter or taller. So to grab the center one in order to scale everything properly, and then set this down, and that looks like the right size. It's roughly the right size, because you can see where the entrance to the chicken coop is. So that's at about 0.25. So if I decide to make everything 0.25 in the future, maybe it'll work. I don't know. It certainly distorted its position. Let's get it from the top. Get it from the side. Look at it. Right, I haven't yet put the raised bed in, so let me do that and then we can go over to alt space and show that process. So I might as well not even try to find the place where the raised bed goes because it's going to come in crazy anyway. I'll go back to the, just make sure this yeah, video is working. Um, I'll go back to the folder that I have, and you probably can't see the folder because OBS won't let you see it, but I'll go into the folder and I'll find my raised bed under R. Raised bed, where are you? Raised bed, raised bed, raised bed. Raised bed, there it is. Raised bed with tomatoes. I'll drag that in. And that seems to be taking a little longer. Now, did raised bed come in? R, 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 R. There's raised bed with tomatoes. I'll drag it. Oh, look at that. It's coming in. It's coming in weird and big. All right, there's the raised bed with tomatoes. I know that it has to be rotated negative 180. We've already established that, I think, pretty definitively. Um, it moved all the way over there, though. Not fun. Um, the other thing is that we know that it, we're going to have to resize it. So let's try a scale of... 0 0.25 and see if that is copacetic with what we want to do. Yeah, 0 0.25 seems to be ballparky correct. Let's see. And it might be a little big. But it's sitting down in the area. Uh, yeah, maybe it's a little. I think it's still too too big. Like I'm pretty sure it's too big. That one, no. That one should be probably 0.15. We have several raised beds in there. Whoopsie. 0.15 and 0.5. 
that looks a little better. So I don't know, some of the objects come in right at 0.25 and some at 0.15. The beds seem to come in better like that. All right, so we have our tomatoes. Leaves sort of lost their greenness. And one of those things didn't come in right at all. We'll have to work on that a little later. But we're getting the basics down. So, okay, so we've shown that we can bring objects into Unity from Roblox. And that's very helpful. So now we want to get those objects into alt space. Um, there's two ways to do it. One is to bring in the entire landscape as if it was a set piece. And if you're using Unity 2019.4.2 F1 and you opened up the proper Unity uh, to Alt Space uploader, then it'll appear here. When you click on that package that they uh, offer, it'll uh, load into and import into your Unity and then it'll appear as a tab here. And then you go to Build Settings and this window opens. And then the first thing we're going to do is put the template in. The template is the entire world without props. Think of it like the scene in a movie, uh, a movie set. Think of it like, like Westworld or think of it like Medieval World or think of it like a New York City uh, set at Universal's backlot or ha Warner Brothers' backlot. And things go on on those sets. You can make a contemporary Western. You can make a old-time Western. You use the same Western set, but you dress it with different props. Same if you're going to make uh, Gangs of New York and use the New York City set, but you'll set it with props from the 1800s, and then you'll make the movie there. If you're making a King Kong update, you'll set it with props like cars that look like the 1930s to make King Kong. If you're doing a contemporary uh, drama uh, or you're doing Serpico, you'll, you'll set it to the 1970s or to the early 2000s, but the set of New York, the big hardscape remains the same. And that's what this is. This is the set. And then you can dress it with things that move, that change. And this is going to be called in alt space a, a, uh, a template. And then you create a world based on that template. That's your movie. The world is your movie. The template is your, is your set, uh, your major set. And so I'm going to bring all of this in by using template. The props go into something called kit. Right now, I'm going to do templates. So I'm going to load my templates. This is connected. I, in my earlier settings, uh, when I first set this up, I made a connection to my Alt Space account. So when I hit load your templates, it's going to go onto the internet and pull the two that I have. And I, I haven't finished uh, with my Rosebud template, even though this is Rosebud. I've been using my Alt Space Kit template. So that's the one I'm going to click on. I could also create a new template. I'm not going to do that. Building for both Windows and Android because if I don't click for Android, then I can't use the Oculus Rift, uh, Oculus Quest, because Oculus Quest is Android based. I'd only be able to use a PC, so and then maybe use Steam um, with HTC Vive. So I'm building for both Android and Windows, and I go build and upload. It's not much harder than that. If you have the right objects, if I if I have too many polygons, if I brought in scripts, it can mess this whole thing up. So I recommend that you. Every time you put like three, four, five objects in, you do a new build. And if it crashes, if it doesn't work, if it doesn't upload, then you can go back and remove those few objects that you put in because you know the day before everything was working well and you'll know what to remove. Otherwise, if you build your whole world and then try to upload it and things go wrong, you'll never know what made it go wrong. So you can see it's compiling the shaders and it's bundling and compressing data. It's doing its thing. This is when you can go and grab yourself a non-sweetened aha uh -huh, sparkling water with peach and honey. You can pat, pat your baby on the head. You can kiss your wife while you're waiting for this. This can take five minutes, ten minutes, seven minutes, three minutes. It all depends. So it's not done until the fat lady sings, as they say. So you'll know when it's done because it will open up a command line interface and start uploading handshaking to alt space and then it'll uh, it'll say upload complete and so that's going to take its sweet time so while this thing is doing well we might as well watch the whole process you need to see so you get an idea of a build this big how long it takes 
just um, you know, walk away and get something to eat and listen for my voice. And I'll say, come back. It worked when it's bundled and compressed all that data. It's still not done. Looks like it's done. It's not. Now it's opened up the command line interface, you see. And it's doing this TLS handshake uh, with the client. Hello, hello, the server key exchange. They're talking. Uh, they're echoing. And then they're trying to agree to a protocol. It did not agree to a protocol. And then maybe it did agree to it. And then it says HTTP. And it gives a, uh, a number. And it says continue. And you wait for that. And if that works, this is where you have another waiting spot. We know that now it has done all the compressing. And you can also tell that it's done the compressing because your world is now empty temporarily, except for the main camera and directional light. And that's because Altspace doesn't want your camera and light. Altspace has its own camera and light, thank you very much. And if you try to put yours in, as I successfully did by mistake one time when I didn't use this protocol, I used... Uh, I uploaded it a different way. When I got another camera in there, oh my gosh, I was stuck in alt space looking at myself upside down from a distance and couldn't get out of alt space to fix anything until I spent a good 15 minutes messing around trying to click on the exit button. Every time I moved my mouse right, the mouse would move, the, the cursor would move in another direction in XYZ space. It was just crazy. So you do not want cameras and you don't want additional lights in your game. Uh, the only reason to have cameras and lights at all is so that you can see what you're doing in Unity. Ah, it's done. So now you see it's done. And what happens is, is that your world reappears in Unity. Yay, hooray for that. And then it said done, upload complete. So now we're going to go over to the website of alt space to make sure everything works. So let me click off of Unity and go into Chrome. And here in Chrome, I'm going to launch my altvr.com and I'm going to log in. And I'm going to go to more, and go to worlds. And then I'm going to go to my worlds. And then I'm going to go to universes. And I have Thomas's universe. And in that universe, I have several worlds I've been working on. But the one I'm doing now is the Rosebud Continuum Echo Science Center. I have a test world for Rosebud, and that didn't work out so well. I have a test world for USF back when I was learning how to do this. But this one has worked the best, so this is the one I'm clicking on. And you'll note that it has a template. And the template I chose when I created my world was this one, my alt space kit template, the one I just uploaded to. And notice here under Uploads, it says that for both Android and for PC, I uploaded one minute ago 13.2 megabytes for the Android and 14.4 for the PC. That means something's missing in the Android build. It didn't compile well. And something else is in the PC world. And I won't know until I get in there. But that's the template. And you don't mess with the template except to do this. It's the world that you're going to go into. Hmm? What is it? Where is it? Yeah. It's on their server. It just says I uploaded from Unity from version 29.4, uh, 2019.4. Shows that using a Verdi. says that I uploaded the Android and the PC on their server, mm -hmm. and I did 13.2 megs for this 14.4 for that one minute ago. Okay. All right. So then I can go to my worlds, and in my worlds, in my universe. This is my world here based on that template and there's only thing you can do from this tool really here you can look at the objects so there's a palm tree there's a dog there's birds there's summer meadow these are things I brought in from alt space these are props that I brought in all these are props they are not in the unity model the world I can go to by coming out of objects and saying enter world. Okay. I see them. And we will. It's entering now. Let me go back to OBJ to let you know there's my OBJ thing. I need to click off of that. You want to see it? And now we're looking at alt space. 
We're looking at another version of all space. Why? Oh lordy. Alright. That's messed up. Alt space. There we go. Okay, so now we're coming into alt space. Oh, I'd already launched alt space and I relaunched it. So, so the one trying to run through. Uh, yeah. So now it's going in and it says, Welcome to the Rosebud Continuum Echo Science Center for Sustainability Education. Okay. I don't know. Oh, go home. You have your home space that Alt Space creates for you. That place with the balcony and basketball courts and the living room. That's your home space. What? Everybody has a home space that Alt Space creates for them. It has a basketball court and a porch. Remember that one? It has a living room. That's home. And then you create your world. There's a home world that they give everybody. I don't know. I know it's a basketball, but it's just another room. It's I can show you. I can leave this. All right, so my wife has a question. That's okay. We'll go home. We'll come back. So I'm going to go to um, settings, and I don't want to exit alt space. Re-enter space, switch account. I don't want to do that. I guess what I'll do is I'll just go worlds, and I'll go my worlds, and I'll go to unity test, my world. Where's home? On this as well. It does show you when you first get in. But to do that, I guess I'd have to. Can you show us where. No, no, I'll, 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 I will go. I'll, I'll take us out. I'll exit Alt Space and I'll come back in. Because you always come in, unless you specifically enter the world from the website, you always come into your home space first. So let me show you that. I'm going to turn on Alt Space VR. And you will see that if you just typed in, because Alt Space is both launchable from your web browser, from that account, or you can launch it from your PC, because you have Alt Space as a program on your PC, and you have a web browser. It's just like Roblox. Roblox, you have Roblox Studio on your PC, and then you have the Roblox website. And you do a lot of management from the website, but then the program is a program on your computer. So if you're not online, you can still use it. So here, look, it launched me into, there it is. I'm, this is home. Everybody's home starts out looking identical. Okay? This is home? That's the living room. That's your home world. Yeah, that's what. did not build this. No, I told you. They provide for you a home world. Now, you see, I started playing in my home world. And I brought in a model of the RV when I was testing things um, through the for, kit. the same for everybody. Yeah, except you won't have the solar panels oh, and the yeah, RV. I brought those in. Exactly. So if you haven't created a world, you can mess with your world. Yes, you were bringing stuff to try in your right. Right. So I made a biodigester out of cylinders here. I made another little mini biodigester there. But then it has its own basketball hoops that you can do. So it's my your your world will look identical to this, except you won't have. I don't even know how to shoot a basket with this using a mouse. It's killing me. Ah. Oh yeah. Um. Anyway, whoa. Lost connection. There, now we're back in. So that's what they meant by go home. You'd end up here. Again. You can test stuff out here. Like you can come into the living room. You, if you've never played with Alt Space before at all, everybody can meet you in your home. And you can dress it with different things. And you can play a video. Like if I put in um, YouTube dot com slash t call aim then my youtube channel shows up here and then i can play my videos right all right hello everybody we're 168 so your home is set up for you to do fun stuff with it but we want to get to, to our own world so we're going to leave this world behind I don't have to leave the living room to do it. I can do it from right here. Click on this. Go to Worlds. Go to My Worlds. Now I'm in Alt Space. Now click Enter. And Loading Main Environment. You can see now. Yeah. 
Okay, so we are in Rosebud. Let's see if what we put in got came in. Yep, there's the shed. Hit the F key on the keyboard, get to the shed. I don't think the size is terrible for the shed. Let's see if it lets you kind of walk in. Maybe it's a bit small. Oh, that's, I don't know what that cube is doing in there. Anyway, so there's the shed. Maybe we need to make the shed a bit bigger, which you cannot do in alt space now. So any changes to the size of the RV or the position or the shed have to be done in Unity because they're part... Compared to the RV, look at the size. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the RV is a little bit better now. I made it a little bigger. We'd only know if you were playing with me and I saw your avatar standing next to the table. That's how I would know if it was sized properly. But since I don't, since it's just me looking down at my own feet, see, I don't know if I made it big enough yet. So, the school bus came in as an alt space thing, so it, we assume that the school bus is the right size because this is the size that the designers for alt space made it. It's one of their featured things. How come I can't move around so much anymore? I don't get stuck here. Okay. So the school bus is right, and then I'm trying to get the RV based on the school bus, and look at the tires are sunk in the ground. So I have to go back to Unity and fix that. There's a lot of stuff that you have to be careful with that you don't really see until you get into the game. But the solar pavilion's working. What else did we bring in just a second ago? The raised bed. The raised bed. Right. So the raised bed, there it is. And there's the cinder block. Cinder blocks look to be kind of the right size, but again, I won't know until somebody else is in the world to see. There's the raised bed. That's looking pretty good. Still need green for the leaves. That's something you have to do in Unity. You can't color stuff in alt space. And we had the, um, the chicken coop. And there's the chicken coop. And it looks like the mesh did not come through. So unfortunately, the, the grate didn't come in. Then maybe you could make it here. Yeah. Well, it's really hard to build in alt space. You just want to bring in props, which is the next thing I want to show you. There's what we brought in yesterday. Did you fix the tree? No. The palm tree? Oh, yeah, I fixed the palm trees. There they are. So here's the thing about fixing things. Like, if I want to move this palm tree back, right? I click on World Editor. These are props did now. You it from I was in Oculus Quest when I fixed it. But I can do it from here, too. You click on World Editor. This is what I'm saying. These are props. Stuff that you bring in from kits which we'll look at in a second, are props. The world is the template, which is the set piece for the movie. Now, I unlock... Well, first I go to edit. Then I I click on the one I want to move so that it shows up here surrounded by a blue line. Otherwise, I wouldn't know which one to, to work with. Then I lock everything except the one that I've now identified so I don't move anything else. And then I try to move around it and then I left kick, click to grab it, and I walk over to where I want to place it and plant it in the ground. So it's like you're, you're there as a set designer. You pick up the props and you move them. But there is a magic you can do that no set designer can do. And that is that you can size it by left clicking on it and use the scroll wheel on the PC in and out to make it bigger or smaller. So that's how you do it on the PC. And then once you have it in the position you want, then you lock it back up, and then you move this down, and then turn off edit mode. Take us to where the deer are. All right, let's go to where the deer are. So hit the F key. There's the snakes on the ground. They don't move. They get fix the animation for somehow. Deer are moving fine, which is good. And what did you want to put in where the deer are? I could add to the summer meadow. I can't find it. Summer meadow, I think you put in the sound of the summer meadow. Unless you literally put in a... Uh, we can look for it. World editor. Now, this is the nasty thing about this world editor. You can't search. So if I want to find summer meadow, i got to click through these to see if it was named summer meadow. If it was, yeah. it is fortunately alphabetical. Palm, rubbish, snake, 
summer meadow. Okay, you brought in a whole bunch of summer meadows. Yeah, because I just opened them. I didn't know. Okay, so let's go to edit mode and let's unlock the summer meadows. And I can see one already, which is way up in the air. And I can bring it. How do you bring it? There you go. Bring it for, no, it is not an object. It is a sound of summer meadows. Summer meadow is a sound. Did you hear those crickets? That yeah. could be from summer meadow. So you've just put. Have them. Yeah, so you've put a bunch of summer meadows in. I can get rid of most of them. The idea is with a sound box is that you only hear the sounds when you come close to it. So let's get rid of every summer meadow except for this one. And know that there's going to be a summer meadow when you come near the deer. Because there's no object in it. And the other way I can tell that it's that it's a sound object is I can go to alt space kits. No, sorry, feature kits. And I can go to here. Environment. It has a little sound icon. Mm -hmm. And when you click on that, these are all sounds. Lakeside, park, coastal birds. They're all sounds. These are all just sounds. Summer meadow is a sound. Yeah. yeah. So those are sounds that they give you because you can bring sounds in. Now we want to talk about kits. I want to bring in a cinder block as a kit piece. Huh? Alright, after I finish this kit piece. I'm going to put a, my own cinder block in as a kit that I can bring in to this set if I wanted to add a cinder block here and there without using Unity. So let me go out of Alt Space for a second and come back to Unity and show you the other part of this. So there's template upload to alt space, which was the whole world, and then there's kit. For kit, what I do is I zoom in on alt, on Unity, and I pick one of the cinder blocks. That cinder block, I want to be available to me as a prop. Okay. So rather than loading my templates, I go to kit, and I load kits. And it handshakes, and there's all my kits. And then I'm going to make a kit folder name, or pick one that I have. All right, look, tell me what you don't understand. No, listen, listen. There's templates, which is the set. That's the whole set. And then there's kits. Kits are props. I can bring individual props. Or in Hollywood, yeah, not good. Like, like, a, you know, like a costume, or here, in this case, a cinder block. I want to be able to get at that and use it in alt space, just like Summer Meadow. Somebody uploaded those into kits mm -hmm. that I can use, and I can bring it in while I'm in alt space. You bring it. I can delete it. I can add it. I can size it. I can play with it. I'm going to load it into alt space from Unity mm -hmm. into a kit, which is what right. I'm doing right now. So you take kits sometimes, sometimes take templates. Right. The templates thing. is the world. It's the scene. And right. kits are props that you can add and drop. It. In or out, so size. Sure and yeah, so I have my own kits that I can use. So I'm going to make a cinder block part of my kit, and I'm going to call this, uh, I'm going to put it into the Rosebud Assets folder that I have. I'm going to duplicate that, Rosebud Assets. Sorry, it's, 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 it's yeah, it. you'll still find your kits are just props that you can use in any world you want. So cinder block is now going to be the kit asset name. Um, and then the next thing you do is convert the game object that you've selected to a kit prefab so that Unity knows where to grab it from, so it doesn't grab everything. So I've selected that, I've named it, I've told it the kit folder name. I should put a capital on here. And then I'm going to convert it to a kit prefab. Now it's converted, it says kit asset created, and that cinder block disappeared because it's now in a different folder. It's down here in, on the left here under project, if I look for alt space and look for export assets maybe. No, export, no, alt space, rosebud, shaders, editor, 
shared assets, you know, a pack. Well, I don't know where it put it. Maybe it's in prefabs here. Iota, yeah, it's in prefabs. And it's under Rosebud Assets. And there it is. That's the cinder block. So that's what the program is going to grab from. And now I've got to select the kit I want to load it to, which is going to be Rosebud Assets. So I select that. And it's telling me, I think if I've done that, Rosebud Assets, build kit for and Windows and for Android, yes. Package to generate screenshots, yes. Package generated, and then load the kit prefab directories. So now I'm going to put it into Rosebud Assets, and I go, it says here you can upload the kit to existing kit, Rosebud Assets. So I'm going to build and upload. And if all works well, then it builds and compresses, just like we saw with the template. And it does the handshaking thing, which is good. And it says upload complete. So now let's head over to Altspace and see if it in fact worked. Sometimes it doesn't. So let's see if this time it did. So here we are in our world, and I want to go and put Cinderblock in the garden. So those are the cinder blocks I can't move. Those came in from Unity, remember? I can't do anything. I can't touch them. I can't kick them. But since I made a cinder block in the kit, if I go to World Editor and I go to Mine and go to My Kits and then go to Rosebud Assets, sure enough, there's the cinder block. So it comes in, but look how tiny it came in. Ah! So I brought it in, but it's super, super, super tiny. And it's got a huge, a huge piece of whatever, which is going to make rotation really tough. Um, let me go in here to the to the gear and update it. Let me call it Cinder Block Test because I might get rid of it. I want to make I know that that's not a good one. It is collidable, so you can bump into it. Uh, I'm going to make the rotation zero in X and zero in Z, and the scale I'm going to set to one. And confirm and let's see what happened maybe it made it way too big let's see oh my gosh it's got to be the biggest cinder block that the world has ever seen I don't even know where the cinder block is now it's way on the other edge of this so this was a bad import obviously because even when I fly way over the top of it it's, it's somewhere in that whole mess and I can go to world Y and start to, to move it like this and yeah this is an example hmm? well I don't have to make it one obviously now that didn't work at one so let me scale it down to 0 0.5 no that's even that's still that's only yeah. half the size about 0 0.01. I think that's what it was, though. And now, how do I find it? Yeah. Why don't I instead get rid of it? Let me go down to the ground. Out of it. Lordy, lordy. Out of edit mode. Drop down to the ground. Turn around. And let's try that. Let's try it again. So we're going to go to My Kits, go to Kits, go to Rosebud Assets, go to Cinder Block. It comes in. We might as well eyeball it. Oops. Grab it. To the left, grab it. There we go. Grab it and size it. I really don't know why it picked all that different white space. But it did. And now when I look at Cinder Block. Maybe it was something with the export. No, oh, definitely something with the export. There is one thing I'll try in a second that to fix this. 
Uh, let's make the rotation here zero again, make the rotation here zero, and hit confirm. Now it's on the ground, and then click on it and whoops, click on it, ah, click on it and throw it. Then the rotation always gets messed up. So one key thing to tell you is this thing called rotation lock. Use it. Get your rotations set because it comes in at the wrong rotation. I can certainly make this 180. It doesn't matter. I can set this later on. But that scale, 0 0.02, that's not too bad. Let's go for that 0.25. Hit confirm and then lock the rotation. And now your cinder block won't rotate when you try to move it, and so you can move it in world Y, which is up and down, or we can move it in world Z, still way too small. I hate how this thing, I hate using the PC for this, and it unlocked the rotation lock. Darn this thing. Then maybe it's about Well, I think that, I think there's, a, I should try bringing it in a different way, because whenever you have these big bounding boxes, Everything gets messed up. So I think I'm going to get rid of it and go back and re-import it. So let's go back to um, let's go back to Unity. Let's go back to Unity, and all right. So we're going to try it again. So this cinder block, I might as well delete. It's just a mess. And this, I'm going to delete. The screenshot. I'm going to pick one of these cinder blocks again and I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to take that cinder block and I'm going to do it again where I load my kits, I select Rosebud Assets, I call this cinder block 2. And I'm going to do make the kit convex. That might be what the problem was. I may have had to check, is the kit convex? Convex, you know, there's concave and convex. Convex means a certain shape. Mm -hmm. And I think that maybe this object, it doesn't know where to put the bounding boxes because it's got these holes in it. So it may... Yeah, but it means sort of like the bounding box edges on the collider. And so it may have not known where the collider is supposed to go in this. I just don't know. I really have no idea. I can have it sit here. I think this is the only object that's selected. But just in case, cinder block three. What does that mean? Well, I'll select the cinder block that's in the cinder block because that's also sort of weird. It's like that's the real model. And let's try that one. And let's see if that makes a difference. So we will load the kit prefab directories. And we're going to build... Oh, we have to um, convert it to a prefab. And... Nothing happened. We go under the model here. Maybe it needs that. Hurt video. Yes. So you can't do what's inside. You can't do the mesh. But there it is. Cinder block two. Let's hope this one works. We build and upload. Let it do its thing. And wait for it to handshake. Is it done? Wait for it to say upload complete. Alrighty. So let's go into alt space now. And here in alt space, we will. You notice it doesn't update the world. Even though I moved these cinder blocks, they didn't change because they're from the old kit, uh, the old template flow. But if we now go into the world and. Yeah. Right, so how do I make this thing bigger? Using a PC really irritates me. Okay, there's that. Um, it's all about the left mouse button and the right mouse button. So I go to mine, and I go to kits, and I go to Rosebud Assets, and there's Cinder Block 2. So let's click on it. 
And nothing. Maybe it's still processing. Because nothing happened. If I click on it again, I'll probably end up later on with two cinder blocks in the game somewhere. Because when I go over here, still nothing's happened. It may have to do with the colliders. I uh, just want to make sure it's successful. Let me go out and come back into the game. I'll jump into Test World for USF, and then I'll come back into the... This one didn't work at all. This is where I have to build Patel on Mars. I had a building, and I had a landscape, and they disappeared. So I don't know what happened there. But I do have... I was experimenting with websites and experimenting with putting in my content videos. So that's there, and then solar panels are in there, and it's, it's one of the messiest little things in the world. I even have a website for USF there that you can get to. So yeah, you can do that kind of thing. So let me get out of there, and let me go back into Rosebud and see if anything happens. Anything, anything, anything. Go back in here and click this. And campfire chicken, no cinder block. No. No, and if I go to mine and go to kits and go to Rosebud Assets, the cinder block 2 is there, but it doesn't come in. Meanwhile, the cinder block, we know that cinder block comes in, and we know it's a mess. So something is wrong, and I'm not sure what it is. Should come in, and maybe later on we'll be surprised, we'll leave the game, we'll come back into the game, and it will work. I hope you don't have the same problems that we do with this kit function. Kits can be dodgy at times. And try it one more time coming in after leaving the game completely and then see if that does anything. Maybe also, and by the way I want to look at this, if I go to yeah, Chrome and I look on the website of it and I look at objects, let's see, cinder block, well it says cinder block 2, <laughs> wow, came in one, two, three, four times. So something's funky here because it's telling me I've tried to put in the cinder block two, one, two, three, four, five, six different times. And there's that summer meadow. So the artifact is there. And now if I go into the world, here, let me show you something. When I go to my worlds, right? and I look into Rosebud, and I look at the objects, it says cinder block 2 six times. Why is it came too many times? Because we tried to put it in so many times. Really? Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to see if they even show up. Um, well, it should have come in. Sometimes it takes a while before things, new objects work. So let's try it again. Go back to Rosebud. Enter now. I'm entering now off of the website, having shut down the resident program on the computer. Now I can come into the game. Come in the game. Let's see if it works. The upshot is that you can build your worlds in Roblox and bring them into alt space. Unity, but there's always these little problems at times. So I'm not seeing the cinder block in the game. Go back to world editor, 
some look. And cinder block two. Well, it does show that it's there. Now we gotta find it. So cinder block position is wherever that is. I can change the rotation. I can confirm. How do I find it? How do I find it? So you go into edit mode and you lock everything except for the cinder blocks. Oh, look at that. That's got an even bigger bounding box. And it came in hugely. I don't even know where it is. And it's way rotated. Oh, that is really something. All right. So this cinder block is at a weird rotation. Now it's not rotated anymore. Lifted in world Y. So I said I needed to lock the rotation. Should have done that. Try that again. It's coming in at a weird rotation. Y is zero. Confirm rotation lock. Now move it up. Now I gotta find where the actual cinder block is in the corner. So I don't know what these bounding boxes where they're coming from. Oh, there it was. Huh. All that bounding box for just that one cinder block. All right, that is ridiculous. So I'm not sure what's causing that. Because this is the cinder block two that we just did. So obviously it is not the collider. And if you wanted to, to use this, you could, but because the cinder block is in this huge bounding box, you're not gonna have a lot of luck moving it around and doing stuff with it. It would be a big pain in the butt to do anything with it. So I'm gonna get rid of those cinder blocks. I think I prefer to do my cinder block work as a static object in, there's the other one coming in really weird. I'm gonna do my cinder block work in Unity as part of the template. There's so many cinder blocks now. Goodness gracious. Okay, they're out. They're out of the game. Goodbye, cinder block. So, normally though, kits do work. I mean, I brought in, like, the biodigester I eventually got to work. I'm not exactly sure how. It may have to do with normals, something, maybe go back into Blender and use it. But you can see if I go to my kits, while I have static biodigesters, I also made a biodigester um, in a kit so I could click on it and then yeah then it works it just comes in really funky but if I want to have a fourth Pusheen biodigester I now can click on that let me see this is one of those cases where when you want to select something there it goes it highlights and then you can lock everything but that one and then I can call this um, Pusheen prop and set the rotation to zero and X and Z. I can keep a tiny scale if I want. Well, that didn't make anything nice. That's weird. What did it do? So obviously the rotation is going to have to be, and you never know in, 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 in alt space, what's Z and what's X? You'll have to try it. Let's put 90 here and see. No, that wasn't the one that we needed to use. Uh, in that case, let's try putting this at zero and putting this at 90. And that was upside down, so let's put this one at negative 90. All right, so it's right side up. And lock the rotation. And then I can use this biodigester as a prop. It's way too small. But it's now in there as a prop. And then you can go in and click on it and enlarge it to whatever size you want and keep it in the game and you can even move it around you can take it and walk with it Except it's really hard to do in with a PC mouse um, you're much better off doing this in VR I have to say but that's just to show you that some of these objects did work when I first brought this machine digester it had a huge bounding box just like the cinder block and I'm not sure what I did right it made it eventually have its own tiny bounding box, but eventually I got it right. And I think I was using Blender to do that. So we got to try something with the cinder block. Uh, but anyway, that is essentially how you get objects from Roblox 
into alt space. I hope that was helpful for you. And we'll do more of these as we get more refined and learn more. All right. Thanks for watching.